Okay, you will have 15 minutes. Or tomorrow's quiz. I believe tomorrow's quiz has four problems. Two binomial theorems and two inequalities. This is the one that's shaded in. Remember, if the leading coefficients are positive, then this one's going to be plus, right? So all the ones that are shaded in are pluses, and then the ones that are not shaded in are minuses. And then I guess we want greater than or equal to zero because this one is plus, yeah? And so all you got to do now is figure out the powers. So since they stay the same around 3, this factor has to have some even power on it. It doesn't have to be 2. You can put 4, 6, 8, 10. Whatever, yeah, 2010, if you want to. And then all the ones that change have odd powers. It doesn't have to be 1. It can be 1, 3, 5, 7, whatever you want. And then negative 4 came from here. It's the same sign, so you have to have an even power on that one. And then that'll be it. So this is working backwards. And everybody can solve an inequality on their calculator. If you can solve an equation, you can solve an inequality, right? <coughs> like number three. How do you solve any inequality on your calculator? Make one side zero. Right? Then you graph this on your calculator right here. Graph that. And then what are you looking for? Like if it was equal zero, well, well, what are you looking for? Where it crosses the x-axis, right? The zeros. So greater than zero means what? Where is the graph above the x-axis? So if you graph it, I'm, I'm, I think it looks something like that. Right? So you, have, you still have to calculate these three zeros, right? You guys, have, you guys can do that. And then where is the graph above the x-axis? Well, between a and b, and then from c to infinity. So if you can solve any equation on your calculator, you can solve any inequality on your calculator. You're just looking, is it above or below? Greater than means above, less than zero means below. Quite simple. All right. OK, so today we're going to learn about absolute value, which is the most difficult thing this chapter. Well, first of all, what is absolute value? Somebody was saying it last week. Well, the absolute value of x is a piecewise function. It's equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0, and it's negative x when x is less than 0. This is the definition of absolute value of x. 
So in other words, you guys, you guys are used to piecewise functions from last year, right? Let me show you how a piecewise function works. So, do, do we know what the graph of y equal x looks like? Yeah, it looks like this. Except we're only going to graph it when x is greater than or equal to this 0. That means starting from here and then going to the right. What does the graph of y equal negative x look like? It looks like this. Except we're only going to graph it when x is less than 0. So starting here and then to the left. And so that's why the graph comes out to a v. But you guys just probably memorized it. It's a v. Yeah? But that's not going to be good enough anymore. You've got, you got to understand why it's a v. Because of the piecewise function. So basically, absolute value, if the inside is positive, when x is greater than or equal to 0, it just stays the same. You don't touch it. You leave it alone. But if the inside is negative, then you've got to negate it. If the inside is positive, leave it alone. If the inside is negative, negate it. That's how absolute value works. So, what is the absolute value of 3? I, mean, I know you guys know the answer. Yeah, but why is it 3? Because if the inside is a positive, which it is, you just leave it alone. What's the absolute value of negative 2? Yeah, it's equal to 2, but why? Because if the inside is negative, you negate it. What's the opposite of negative 2? 2. You see how it works? If the inside is positive, leave it alone. If the, if the inside is negative, you negate it. So the opposite of a negative number is just going to become positive. That's how absolute value works. Okay, now we've got to be able to solve problems. And believe me, they get very complicated. So that's why you've got to know the absolute value definition. Okay, let's start off easy. This is the kind you got in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Absolute value of x minus 3. No! 5. Oh, you heard that word echo. No! <laughs> it's less than 2. Okay, how do we learn how to solve this? This is the kind you get on the SAT also, yeah? You put x minus 5 in the middle. And then what do you put here and here? Negative 2 and 2, right? And then how do you solve for x all by itself? How do I get rid of this minus 5? <coughs> You add 5 across the board, so you get 3 here and 7 there, and there's your answer. Easy, yeah? But you have to be able to get from, like I do, if you're in my SAT class, you've got to be able to go from here back and forth. Okay, how do you graph x's between 3 and 7? You put 3 here, 7 there, and everything in between, right? Woo! So what do the 5 and the 2 have to do with this, this, this answer here? Well, what's halfway between 3 and 7? 5. See 5? That's this number here. This number here tells you the, the midpoint of the interval. What does this 2 here have to do with this problem? Yeah, that's the distance from the center to the edge. 2. 2. Computer teacher showed you this last year, yeah? Okay, so this number is the number in the middle, and this number tells you how much to go left and right. Oh, so now that you have this problem, you can just write down the answer already, right? So, if you have absolute value of x plus 2 is less, uh, yeah, okay, less than 6, what's the answer without doing any work? What number is in the middle? What number is in the middle? Negative 2. If I go 6 to the left, where am I going to be? And if I go 6 to the right, 4, finish. Yeah? And you've got to be able to go the opposite way too. Like, what if I give you a, 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 an interval, like, uh, negative 3 is less than x is less than 7. How do you write that using an absolute value? Because that's what you have to do for number 1. So you go like this. Uh, absolute value of x minus something is less than something. Okay, but what do we call a box and triangle? Okay, what's the box? That's the number in the middle. What's halfway between negative 3 and 7? Yeah, just take the average, right? Add them and divide by 2, 2. And then how far is it from 2 to either edge? 5. There you go. So it's important to, you can't just, see, at a certain level, when you get to calculus, it's not enough to just solve it. You've got to understand what these numbers mean. This is the number in the middle, and this tells you how much to go to either edge. Okay, and then what if I change it to greater than? Is that going to change anything? Like, what if you have absolute value of x minus... 4 is less than 3. No, greater than, I just said. Greater than 3. Same thing. What's the number in the middle? 
4, except in, you go 3 left and 3 right. So if you're at 4 and you go 3 left, where are you? You're at 1. And then if you're at 4, if I go 3 to the right, where are you? From 4 to 3, 7. That's the answer. You guys see the difference between the two? Like if it's less than, then it's going to be between the two numbers. But if it's greater than, then it's going to be these two numbers and to the right and to the left. Right? This is all review from last year, right? <laughs> okay, so that's the review. Okay, now let's kick it up a notch. Okay, you're going to have very, like, very few problems like this. Oh, okay, yeah, before we go any further, do you guys know the difference between and and or? Because if you don't, you're pretty much sunk. You gotta tell me right now, do you guys know the difference between and and or? Oh, yeah, I'll give you a problem. I'll give you a problem. X is less than 2, or X is greater than. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Here. X is greater than 2. Why did I erase that part? Then? Or X is greater than 3. <coughs> Simplify this. Window. <laughs> so which one is it? Okay, that's correct, because or means union. Do I have to review union and intersection? That's what you got to know. Okay, no, let's, let's go back to kindergarten. You got to know this on the SAT, people. Let's say set A is 1, 2, and 3. Set B is equal to 2, 3, and 4. This is the example I give when I teach kindergarten. Okay? What is A union B? Union means if you put these numbers in a box, and then I put these numbers in the box, what's in the box? If I throw these numbers in a box, throw those numbers in a box, what's in the box? One, two, three, four. That's union. What is intersection? Elements that are common to both sets. What elements belong to both sets? Two and three. Now do you see the difference between union and intersection? See, that's why or, do you notice or from logic? What's the symbol for or? Isn't it that? Hey, doesn't it look like that? Yeah, except you use union between two sets. You use the word or between two statements. That's the difference. But they mean exactly the same thing. So if you throw these numbers in a box, all the numbers greater than two in a box, and then throw these numbers in a box, all the numbers that are greater than three, what's in the box? All the numbers that are greater than 2, right? That's union. That's or. And same thing with and and intersection. So what if I said x is greater than 2 and x is greater than 3? And means the same thing as intersection. That's why the, the symbol for and in logic is this, right? Ooh, it looks like intersection. Yeah. That means what elements are common to both sets? x is greater than 3. <coughs> I think we better do a few more examples. You guys look kind of shaky. <coughs> x is greater than 1, or x is less than 3. How do you simplify that? If you throw all the numbers greater than 1 in the box, then you throw all the numbers less than 3 in the box. What's in the box? Are you serious? What's in the box? All real numbers, everything. The whole number line. Or if you want to write negative infinity to infinity, you can do that, right? Okay, but what if I said x is greater than 1 and x is less than 3? What elements are common to both? Where do they overlap? Yeah, all the numbers between 1 and 3, right? Look, if you have to do this, look, you are kidding card. X is greater, how do you graph x is greater than 1? How do you graph x is less than 3? Now, can you see the union would be all real numbers? And an intersection is where they overlap. That would be between 1 and 3, right? OK, if you, because if you don't know this, it, it, you just might as well give up or it's Sign your name on the top of the paper and hand it in and get 36. you got to know the difference between and and or. It's super important. OK, now, maybe now we can do problems. OK, so let me give you a problem. Okay, Like I said, you're not going to get the simple kind you had last year. Okay, let me concentrate. Let me concentrate. 
Absolute value of 2x minus 3 is less than 5x plus 1. That probably looks like one of your homework problems tonight. Now, there's several ways you can do this. See, the thing with absolute value, the, you know, I think we've got to even go back even further. Okay, let's, let's preschool. Absolute value of x equals 5. No, 2. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's on your notes, people. That, this means what? This means x equals negative 2 or x equals 2, right? x equals plus or minus 2. What does the absolute value of x less than 2, what does that mean? What does it mean? What numbers, when you absolute value it, will be less than 2? You just think about it. All the numbers that are between negative 2 and 2. Absolute value of x is greater than 2. What does that mean? What do I have to absolute value so that it's going to be bigger than 2? All the numbers that are less than negative 2 or all the numbers that are greater than 2, right? Okay, this is in your notes, except I use an A instead of a 2. That doesn't make it, that maybe the 2 is more understandable. I don't know. Now, does this look like one of those three forms right there? Look. Absolute value of gorilla is less than banana. Does that look like one of these things right there? Yeah, this one right here, look. Absolute value of gorilla is less than banana. So one way you can solve it is just to use that, that form right there. What does this mean? You, that means gorilla is between, if you follow that, negative banana and banana. Maybe I should have used A instead of 2. Just look at the notes. I think I even gave an example on this. Okay, now how do I solve an inequality like this where you have, see the one we had the first time only had a variable in the middle, right? When you only have a variable in the middle, easy, right? Second grader can do it. But what happens when you have variables in all three? Can I just add three across the board and then divide by two? No, why, why not? Because you still would have variables here. Solving for x means solve for x. So, this is in your notes. What does this mean when you have something is less than something is less than something? What does, what does this actually mean? This means a is less than b and b is less than c. That's what it means. Okay, so when you have variables in all three, again, okay, what, what does that mean? It means a is less than b and b is less than c. Sometimes I just use that instead of add because that's what it means. It means that. Okay, now, now, solve this inequality. Solve this inequality. That should be easy. And then put that together with that intersection. Okay, so how do you do this? Negative 7. This is algebra 1 kind, right? Negative 7x is less than negative 2. x is greater than 2, 7. How come greater than? Because you're dividing by a negative number. You've got to change it. That's a major error, you know, on a quiz or test. You don't change it. Negative 3x is less than 4. x is greater than negative 4 thirds. Okay, now I'll put them together with n. What is the intersection of this and this? Where do they overlap? Now, if you have a difficult time, if you cannot do it in your head, draw it out. How do you graph x is greater than 2 sevenths? Wow! How do you graph x is greater than negative 4 thirds? Wow! Like that, right? Where do these graphs overlap? Yeah, greater than 2 sevenths. And so that's your answer. So the answer is x is greater, or if you want to write it in interval notation. I don't care how you write it. You can write it in interval notation or just regular. Doesn't matter. OK, so one way to solve absolute value problems is if it fits one of these forms, then you just use it. OK, but now I'm going to show you a technique that works for any absolute, because sometimes you're going to get problems that don't fit these forms. What do you do? Okay. Well, you go back to the, the, the absolute value definition. So I'm going to solve the same problem. Remember the answer now. I'm going to do the same problem, except I'm going to do a way that works every single time, no matter what. It's called the number line method. Basically, you're just using the definition of absolute value. Okay. And what is it again? Definition of absolute value. If the inside is positive, leave it alone. If the inside is negative, negate it. That's all you got to know. 
Okay, now here's an absolute value. So on the number line, I put three halves. Why, why, why did I put three halves? Because that makes the inside zero. Because remember how absolute value works. If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. If the inside is negative, you negate it. So how can you tell if it's positive or negative? You gotta figure out when it's zero, right? Because when you figure out when it's zero, then on one side it's positive and the other side is gonna be negative, right? Okay, how come I don't put negative one fifth on the number line then? Because there's no absolute value on it. If there was an absolute value on it, then I would put negative one fifth on the number line as well. But the only, there's only one absolute value, so only three halves goes on the number line. Okay, now, is three halves part of the solution or not part of the solution? In other words, if I plug in three halves, does it, does it call it true or false? Oh my gosh. It's two. Why? Because if you plug in three halves here, you get zero. And if you plug in three halves there, you get some positive, I don't know what it is, some positive, well, I do know what it is, but you don't need to know what it is. It's a positive number. Is zero less than a positive number? Wait, let me think. Let me think of a calculator. Yes! So it's part of the solution. Okay, now watch. Watch what I do now. Okay, think of a number bigger than three halves. Okay, whatever, okay? Is the inside positive or negative? It's positive. Okay, so by definition, you leave it alone. If you think of any number bigger than three halves, isn't the inside going to be positive? So you leave it alone. And this one just stays because it's not in the absolute value. Okay, think of a number smaller than three halves. Okay, is the inside positive or negative? Look, zero minus three is negative, so you negate it. And then the other one stays the same because it's not in the absolute value. So all I did is, if the inside is positive, I left it alone. If the inside is negative, I negated it. That's all I did, because I used the definition. And then now we got algebra one now. Do I know how to solve these inequalities? Yes. Negative three x is less than four, x is greater than negative four thirds. Now, how do I graph x is greater than negative four thirds only on this interval? Because this inequality that you wrote is only valid on this interval. How do you graph x is greater than negative 4 thirds on this interval? It's the whole thing! <laughs> because how would you graph x is negative 4 thirds? Wouldn't you put negative 4 thirds on the number line and go to the right? Yeah, but you're only doing it on that interval, so that's why it's the whole thing. Okay, let's solve this one now. Negative 7, x is less than negative 2, x is greater than 2 7. How do you graph x is greater than 2 7 only on this interval? Well, what if you put 2 7 here? And then go to the right. And then whatever you see on your number line, that's the answer. So the answer is x is greater than 2 sevenths. Was that the same answer we had last time? Yeah, that's because this method works every single time, no matter what. So when you do your homework problems tonight, you've got to decide which method is going to be faster. If it fits one of the forms, I would say use one of the forms, because that's probably faster. But Sometimes you have no choice and you gotta use this method, but this method works all the time. Okay, let's kick it up a notch. You guys think you're good now, yeah? You guys always think you're so good. Okay, let's put two absolute values. Absolute value of, make up some numbers, 3x minus 1 is greater than the absolute value of 2x plus 5. There. I'm sure you have one that looks just like this. I just changed the number. Okay, does this look like one of the forms that I've had? Yes, it does! Absolute value of x is greater than a. That's what you have here, right? What does this mean? x is less than negative a, or x is greater than a, right? Except this whole thing is the a, though, right? So it does fit the form. So you could do this. Gorilla is less than negative banana or x, gorilla, is greater than banana. But can you see, I mean, that, that works, except can you see that's going to take a while to do? So if I were me, I wouldn't use this then. I would just do the number line. But you can do it. Okay, what goes on the number line? 
one third and negative five halves now because you got two absolute. If you have two absolute values, you get two numbers on the number line. If you get three absolute values, you're going to have three numbers on the number line. Okay, is negative five halves part of the solution? You want to change the answer? If I plug in negative five halves for x, isn't the left side going to be positive? Because there's an absolute value there, right? If I plug in negative five halves here, you get zero. Is a positive number greater than zero? Yes, it's part of the solution. Okay, what about one third? If I plug in one third here, you get zero. Over here, you can get a positive number. Is zero greater than a positive number? Don't be ridiculous. So that's not part of the solution. Okay, think of a number bigger than one third. Rhymes with bun. One. Is the inside positive or negative? If you plug in one. Positive. What about here? Positive. So what do I do? I leave it alone, and I leave it alone, because they're both positive. Okay, let's just do one at a time then. So solve this. X is greater than 6. How do I graph x is greater than 6 only on this interval? Well, you put a 6 down, and you go to the right, to the right. Okay, think of a number between negative 5 halves and 1 third. Right, it's a hero. <laughs> zero! Or you, it doesn't have to be zero. You want to you you plug in two nines then? I think zero is better. Plug in zero here. Ooh, this one's negative, so what do I do? You negate it. And then if I plug in zero for x there, it's positive, so you leave it alone. You see how this works? Somebody said last year something about Mr. Rubash saying something turn off, turn on, thermostat. Who had Mr. Rubash? Turn on the thermostat, turn it off. Does that sound familiar? Regina? You remember that, but you don't know what the heck it's for. I think if the inside is positive, then you turn it on. No. But if the inside is hot, then you turn it off. Okay, don't, don't tell me. I don't need to know. Negative 5x, I was just curious. Negative 5x is greater than 4. x is less than negative 4 fifths, because you divide by negative. Now, how do you graph x is negative 4 fifths less than only on this interval? Well, you put negative 4 fifths here, and you go to the left, to the left. And then finally, you have one here. Think of a number smaller than negative 5 halves. Oh, boy. If you can't think clearly, how about negative 100 then? Does that do the job? OK, if I plug in negative 100 for x here, that's negative, and that's negative. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm, no, I'm going to negate them both. So you negate this one, and you negate that one, because they're both negative. And then you solve it. So negative x is greater than negative 6. x is less than 6. Now, how do you graph x is less than 6 only on that interval? Well, wouldn't it be the whole thing? Because 6 is over here. When you graph it, it goes all the way to the left. So starting from here, it's going to be everything. And then whatever you have on your number line, that's the answer. So the answer is from negative infinity to negative 4 fifths, and then from 6 to infinity. So if, when you do the number line method, it works every single time, unless you make a mistake. Now sometimes, once in a while, there's a shortcut. Like this one has a shortcut. Okay, remember that answer, because I'm going to show you a shortcut. Once in a while, you have a shortcut, but you've got to know what you're doing. True or false, both sides of this inequality are non-negative. Yeah, because you've got absolute value, right? Okay, so when both sides of an inequality are non-negative, you can square both sides without having to check your answer. See, like the problem I did the first time, this side didn't have an absolute value, right? So you could square both sides, but then you have to check your answer. Now, how would you check your answer when there's like an infinite number of answers, right? Like, when you have something like this, isn't that infinite number of answers? How do you check your answers? Very difficult, yeah? So that's why inequalities, you don't square both sides unless you know both sides are not negative, which they are in this case. So I'm going to square both sides. Watch this. This is not magic, you know. I square both sides. What happened to the absolute value, Mr. Park? No. When, I, when you square something, is it ever going to be negative? No. So that's why you don't need an absolute value anymore. <coughs> Okay, and then now this is like the inequality we had on the last night's homework. 
is no absolute value. So how do you do it? How do we, what's the procedure for solving regular inequalities on last night's homework? I don't know, I didn't do my homework yet, Mr. Park. Don't worry, I'm going to do it before tomorrow's quiz. You make one side zero, and then you factor this side, right? Now, last night's homework, probably what you did is you multiplied out everything and you made one side zero, but look, look at the form that it's in. A squared minus B squared. What form? What do, what, do we call, what do we call this in algebra one? When you see A squared minus B squared, it's called a myth, it rhymes with difference of mwares. It's a difference of squares. What? Okay, true or false? Did you guys learn that this is equal to A plus B times A minus B in algebra one? You're under our oath now. Did you or did you not learn that in algebra one? Well, you're out Yeah. Okay, remember, you're under oath now. <laughs> okay, so isn't this A squared minus B squared? So I can factor this as A plus B. Can we do this in our head? We're on it, right? What is A plus B? If this is A and this is B, what is A plus B? 5x plus 4 times A minus B. Oh, I have a difficult time with minus, Mr. Park. A minus B. X minus 6. See, it's factored. Now, if you want to, you can multiply out everything and factor it. You'll get the same thing, but it's a difference of squares. And then how do we solve this? What do I put in the number line? Negative 4 fifths and 6. No and no. How do I know it's plus minus plus? Because I did dozens of these problems already. And since it's greater than 0, it's going to be here and here. Wasn't that the exact same answer we had last time? Yes. So sometimes you have a shortcut, but you got to know when to use a shortcut. Every year, I give a problem like this. Like it's almost the same thing, 2x plus 5. But there's no absolute value in this one. You cannot square both sides because then you got to check your answers. And that's a nightmare when you have an infinite number of answers. So I would highly suggest to you, you only use the shortcut if you choose to use it. When you have absolute value of gorilla, is either you look greater than or less than the absolute value of banana. That's the only time you use it. Because this, this is a good weapon, but it can hurt you. So on tonight's homework, I would only use it on C, 2C. Okay, last thing. What happens when there's more than two absolute values, Mr. Park? Because look, problem 2F, get three absolute values. It doesn't matter how many you have. Okay, in fact, uh, let me do one that looks vaguely almost the same. Absolute value of X plus the absolute value of X minus 3. So why don't I change this one to a 2? And then less than absolute value of x plus 2, so I'll change down to a 3. So this is the exact same thing. You just change the numbers. It's like the quiz. OK, so this one, you have no choice. You've got to do the number line method, which works all the time. What numbers do I put in the number line? 0, 2, and negative 3, right? Is negative 3 part of the solution? True or false if I plug in negative 3? Come on, get. Try it, true or false? Hanoka, zero. Uh, you got the easiest one. Plugging in zero is, come on, a baby can do this. True. Zero plus two is less than three. You're right, it's true. Wait, did you say true or false for this one? Then Chen, I'll get two. Two plus zero is less than five. Wait, let me get my calculator. It's true! Two plus zero is less than five. How come students every year get trouble just plugging in integers? I don't get it. Okay, now look how easy this is. Once you get used to this, it's so easy. If you think of a number bigger than 2, all of them will be positive, right? So you leave it alone, you leave it alone, you leave it alone. S -s -s -d 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 x is less than 5. How do you graph x is less than 5? Only on here. Go to. Oh, easy. 
Okay, think of a number between 0 and 2 now, like 1. This is positive, leave it alone. 1 minus 2 is negative, so you've got to negate it. And then 1 plus 3 is positive, so you leave it alone. This x cancels that x, so you get negative x is less than 1, x is greater than negative 1. How do I graph x is greater than negative 1 only over here? Well, it would be everything, right? Because negative 1 is here, it's going to the right here. Right? Okay, think of a number between negative 3 and 0. If it takes that long to figure it out, you're in trouble. Negative 1, that's negative, so negate it. That's negative, so you negate it. That's positive, so you leave it alone. Oh, so Mr. Park, every time you move one region, one of them changes. Was that the thing you learned about the therm thermostat last year, then? Just, just keep staring. Negative 3x is less than 1. x is greater than negative 1 third. Now, how do I graph x is greater than negative 1 third only on that interval? Well, you put a negative 1 third on the number line and go to the right, to the right. And then finally, think of a number smaller than negative 3, like negative 4. They're all negative, so you've got to negate all of them. Negate it, negate it, negate it. And then, oh, go, oh, go, negative x, less than negative 5. x is greater than 5. How do you graph x is greater than 5 only here? No, can, because 5 is way down there. You're going to the right. So for this region, there's no solution. So whatever's on your number line, that's the answer. So the answer is... From negative one third to five. Woo! I can go higher if I want. Yeah! Okay, now you remember you can solve any inequality. Oh. You can solve you can solve any inequality on your calculator. Like, what if I let you use a calculator to do this? What would you do? I already taught you how to do it. Make one side zero and graph it. And then since it's less than zero, then you're looking for where is the graph below the x-axis. Okay, let's, let's, we better practice that. Take it out. Let's go. So y1 equals, so you guys can make one side zero in your head, right? Okay. You guys know how to take absolute values in your calculator? Abs. Absolute value of x plus the absolute value of x minus 2 minus the absolute value of x plus 3. Graph this on your calculator, and then we're looking where is the graph below the x-axis. Where's abs? Math. Math num. Math num on the ti. What about for the, uh, the, 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 what's the other one called again? The prison people. Where, where's abs? Find it? No. Where, where could abs be? How about, no, no, wouldn't be in the menu, yeah? What are we, wait, wait, what's all these things over here? Uh, no, no. Where would abs be? Yeah, wait, how did you get that? Option. 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 Number. Numeric. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So, so same thing. It's like option num, except they had to do math now, but then prison people do, you do option num. Okay, did it work? Yeah, of course it worked. Why would you teach you something that doesn't work? You know what? Maybe I should start teaching things that don't work, and then you got, you got to figure out what it is. Okay, this is the hardest thing, but it's, it's really not that hard, right? If the inside is positive, you leave it alone. If the inside is negative, you negate it. It's not that hard at all. Why am I talking like that? Okay, so we're not learning anymore. That's why the test is this Friday. Already. So tonight's homework is Vinapsony 3, and then the rest are all practice tests. I don't know. I don't, we're probably not going to do them all. Okay, but tonight is a graph. There's some graphs you have to draw. That should be quite interesting. But I gave you a hint so you can do it. Okay, we got, oh, I think got one minute left.